for the nice words. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming. Uh, well, I haven't finished. I haven't even started. Okay. Uh, uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is related to the status of English in Morocco. It's what they will deliver is just a kind of uh, uh, introduction, if you want, as uh, Si Khalid has already mentioned that. And uh, my outline will be just, uh, I will talk about uh, English in the official documents and official narratives. And then I will move on to the attitudes towards English in Morocco. What do Moroccans think about English? And then English learning in Morocco, both formal and informal learning, and English in higher education in Morocco, particularly research. I will address the research issue. And then benefits to individuals and to the country. And then I will also talk about some misconceptions that, that are prevailing here related to English. And I will conclude uh, this talk. Good. Uh, the context of the talk first. I mean, uh, because I, uh, there is always why we, uh, why a, a, a topic is raised. Now, uh, as you know, there has been a, a, a hot debate about languages, not just uh, about English, but about languages, uh, in both both in research and in societal debates in, in, on, uh, on social media, and uh, what we read here and there, uh, newspaper articles, etc. Uh, and then I think that uh, this, uh, this topic is worth uh, investigating and debating. Then, uh, high aspirations to English as a way out of the tunnel of challenges in the Moroccan education, because people think that if we adopt English, we will, we, 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 uh, things will improve. And, and they will, I will deal with this uh, later. And then uh, uh, we have a certain heritage coming from, from, from history of Morocco. And that heritage, uh, linguistically speaking, uh, it, it has created conflicts across languages, and, and I'm going to deal with this as well. Uh, let me just tell you what this talk is not about. I am not promoting English. I'm not here to say that English is a language of whatever, although it is a language of technology and research. I mean, that's, 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 uh, that, that, that. But, but, but I'm not promoting English. And here, I am not going to talk about issues or challenges that are related to other languages, namely Arabic and French in Morocco. I, I have research in, that, in those languages. I know what's happening in those languages, but this is not the right place, not the right time to talk about these issues. Now, let me just uh, start my talk with uh, English in official documents. As you know, all the official documents of reforms, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about education reforms, starting from 1999 with the Charter of National Education and Training to the latest framework law, uh, 51.17, uh, th that, that was issued in, in 2019. In all these reforms, languages have have been or have, have, have got a big share. Uh, uh, why am I telling this? Because in all these l l reforms, there is a part that is devoted only for languages. So uh, level nine in uh, the charter, emergency plan, we have project 20, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, level 13 in the strategy, in the strategy vision to, to 2015, 2030. And articles 31 and 32 in the framework law. But all these reforms talk about foreign languages. 
they don't name the languages. Uh, implying, so the implication here is that they are talking about English and French. When talking about foreign languages in Morocco, where well, people understand that, that we are talking about English and French. All the reforms encourage the teaching of foreign languages. Recently, you know, in 2021, the new development model came out. It's there as an official document where English is named. It's named in page 113, and it's named in relation with doctoral students. So the new development model says that doctoral students should be uh, good at English so that they can follow, and then, and, and then they will provide evidence for this. I, I have evidence for, for all this. What are the aspirations? What did Morocco hope? What does Morocco hope to, to happen? For example, in, in framework law 2051.17, in Article 32, it, it just uh, reiterates the, uh, 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 the objective set by the strategic vision 2015-2030. What does it say? It says that a learner, any learner in Morocco, by the end of his high school or her high school, will be mastering Arabic, will be able to communicate in Amazir, and will be able to use at least two foreign languages. Again, when talking about foreign languages, the implication goes to, to uh, English and French. Uh, recently, the model also put some aspirations, and then it calls for the improvement of language proficiency, but based on solid grounds. Uh, not, so based on research, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, these are the aspirations. W what we are going to see throughout this talk is whether we have the mechanisms of putting these, of reaching these aspirations. And, and, and that's, that, that's the major challenge here. Now, in official discourse, I've run just Google as as a search engine. I'm not advertising any, any search engines, but, but anyway, I ran it and then I put Balamakhtar and English. So I found that he declared something about English in 2016 and all the same with all the ministers of education or the ministers of higher education. But probably the most controversial uh, 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 debate or uh, declaration took place when uh, Minister Daudi uh, said, well, at, at the beginning, because I have documented all his declarations, at the beginning he just said a fact, that English is the language of research and technology par excellence. Well, he didn't say anything uh, that, that people don't know. But there were, there were, there were a, lot of debate, a lot of debates on this. And then later in, in a certain university, in Agadir, well, he, he, he said that uh, a researcher who doesn't know English should bury his grave uh, himself, uh, so should, should, uh, should dig his grave for himself, etc. So that's, that's a bit too, uh, too, uh, too radical. Uh, but but it, it, uh, it, uh, it, it created a lot of buzz on social media. Well, because I had nothing to do at that time, so I, had, I did research just to, uh, to keep me uh, busy. I collected all those, all those debates, and I was able to collect something like 2018 reactions to his, uh, to his, uh, to his, uh, uh, to his uh, uh, declaration. Together with a student of mine, uh, Saudi, and we published that article, we, we analyzed all those because this will take me to the next slide, to the attitudes of Moroccans. And these are the, uh, 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 the declaration, I mean, uh, this is the debate. The 2018, we classified them into patterns. We, we worked out 11 patterns. And you can see uh, people 
uh, most debate was around uh, was around English is the language of technological progress and scientific research. So that's that's the biggest uh, 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 proportion. Uh, followed by English as an international language, it's a lingua franca in many fields. Uh, then uh, most of it was against French. I don't know. So it, it, it was about English, but people uh, start talking, uh, having a negative attitude towards French. I didn't understand why, wh why it was uh, this. And then that pushed me to do more research on the attitudes of people towards towards uh, languages, and I'm going to talk about that. In terms of attitudes, Moroccans have a positive attitude towards English. I didn't find a single research study that said that people are against uh, the implementation of, of English. Obviously, when I did my, when uh, I have an article, so it, it appears here, Buzian 2020, I, 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 I asked some, I asked the uh, five departments in, uh, in the School of Humanities, and, and the choice of departments was, was on purpose. I chose the departments of Arabic studies, English studies, and French studies. And they chose Islamic studies and philosophy. So uh, those who, uh, who know a bit the, uh, the, the landscape will understand why I chose uh, these, these departments. None of the students showed any negative attitude towards any of the languages. I, I, I worked on Amazir, Darija, Standard Arabic, English, and French. So they all appreciated the, uh, uh, the, the learning of languages. But the one that scored the highest was English. Why? Uh, according to what I, I, I uh, to, to what I worked out, it's because of its global status. It, 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 it's not because of anything else, and because especially it is not associated with uh, the colonizer. It's not French is associated with, with with the colonizer, but English, as Coleman said in 2020, 2010. It's a neutral language. I don't know how, how much neutral it is, but, 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 but it's a neutral, for, at least for Moroccans. Buckner says it clearly uh, about Morocco. She, she's talking about Morocco. And then she said, English may be prized for its instrumental value as a key to the outside world without carrying the baggage of cultural imposition that colonization brings. So stated clearly, so this is why Moroccans have positive attitudes towards English. Now, however, in documenting the spread of English in Morocco, I came across something that proved that English at a certain time in Morocco regressed. There was a regression. Uh, and, and, and they will tell you w w where, w w what the features of that regress happened. And then I'm, I'm going to talk about English is back, when, when, when it has come back. <clears throat> uh, public institutions, for example, in high schools, oral in the back exam was abolished. We used to have oral, but uh, now we have only the written exam. Uh, Preformation classes were abolished. Preformation classes are those classes where students were selected, the best students in English, based on an entrance exam, etc., etc. And then they were, there were just one or two in every uh, delegation or the uh, regional directorate, as they are called now. And they had nine hours of English a week. So uh, these, these disappeared, uh, mysteriously. We used to have, when I was a, a, a teacher in the secondary school, we used to have four hours in some classes with two hours in groups, small groups. Those groups disappeared. Uh, number of hours in, of English were reduced. 
and the number of supervisors were criti was critically reduced because of the early retirement. That's what we call the DVD. I don't know why we call it, but anyway, so it's, it's early retirement or voluntary retirement. Pre-service training radically changed to move towards less input. So this is, uh, this is just a part of it. The other part is here. English in higher education and media. Access to the departments of English was restricted because normally the Department of English is an open access uh, department, but uh, there were restrictions. Uh, which differ, uh, those restrictions differ from a faculty to another. Large size classes because of, uh, in higher education, because of early retirement, English in open schools was abolished. It was until this year, English was not taught in faculties of letters, faculties of law, economics and uh, etc., and faculties of sciences. And these faculties accommodate 87% of the students, which simply means that 87% did not learn English, apart from the departments of English in different, in different faculties. Uh, English provisions in vocational training and uh, science engineering management schools that's what we call ESP in our, in our jargon, English for specific purposes. Uh, this type of English needs a lot of structuring, a lot. It just, I mean, when uh, I'm, uh, I'm working on an article on that because it will, it will appear in uh, proceedings of uh, ESP in Morocco last year in Meknes. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, the, the amount I have collected is uh, so, especially of uh, 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 doctorate, doctorate dissertations. They all point to it as a kind of a weak, uh, a weak uh, 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 area in Morocco. News on TV in English uh, do not, uh, does not appear anymore. So we used to have uh, uh, Spanish, uh, English, uh, etc. So. Well, we still have uh, uh, some hours in, uh, in, in radio station, but, 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 but on TV, it was abolished. Learning English on TV was abolished. We, we used to have a series in Ula, back to 2000, 1998, etc. So it, 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 it disappeared. Some newspapers and journals stopped publishing. We used to have some newspapers in English, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to name them because, because if, if you just, uh, uh, if you use a search engine, you will come across uh, many, many, newspaper, many newspapers that have disappeared. Now, this is regression. It's back. <laughs> All right. It's back, but, but, but with, with, uh, with some good news. Uh, uh, the, the first I'm, I'm going to start with is what happened, what has happened just this year. Uh, uh, English is implemented in grade seven in the middle school. Uh, it was just one year earlier, but now it's three years earlier. Uh, well, uh, th th this is a recommendation uh, by, uh, by a report, so it's, it's online, the report is online anyway. They, they provided three scenarios and Morocco took, took the best, the most plausible scenario that they provided. Well, uh, that's. English is back in public higher education as well, so open access institutions, and this is one of the good things that they are talking about in reform in higher education. So uh, one of the arguments is that w we have brought languages back. So uh, w w languages, again, foreign languages, it's uh, English and, and French. Uh, <clears throat> public space is invaded with English ads. And there is a colleague of, of mine uh, who, who, who uh, did her PhD in Canada, and she lives in Canada, uh, investigated this. 
And uh, uh, we have a lot of Arabize. I don't know whether you know this word Arabize. It's just the, it's just Englishy Arabi. Arabi Englishy, it comes Arabize. Okay? It's just that, that language that uh, teens use on social media, w uh, Arabic written in Latin scripts and uh, with some words uh, from French or from English, but mostly from English, uh, that, that they use. And, 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 and this is a very interesting topic. I talked about it some, uh, uh, a month ago in a conference. And, uh, and they called for more research about this phenomenon in, in Morocco. The new generation of, uh, oh, before that, some institutions launched BAs in streams in which French or Arabic had been the language of instruction. So we have some streams of economics where, where the uh, English is a medium of instruction. Etc. Etc. So the new generation of doctoral students should master English. Now it's it's a kind of written there. Uh, there is a ministerial uh, circular that says that uh, these students should prove. Now it's not anymore. Uh, it's not anymore just uh, uh, a kind of uh, uh, wish, but but it's a must. It it has turned into a must. Schools and higher education institutions that adopt English as a medium of instruction have been authorized and accredited, even in the private sector. Now, well, uh, that's how English is back. <clears throat> in learning English in Morocco, we have, um, 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 I've, I've, there, are, there are a number of dissertations, a number of uh, studies, but, but, but they brought only, only two. One about formal learning, and the other one about informal learning. The first one is by uh, a colleague of mine, uh, Professor Ben Zahaf, in, uh, uh, at the Faculty of Letters El Jadida. Uh, his uh, his uh, doctorate was a kind of, he followed a group of students from the Common Core, what we call the Common Core, the uh, Tronc Commun, until the second year baccalaureate. He gave them the same tasks in French and in English, and he used the same tools of measurement. His tools are, are, are objective. It's not a kind of impressionistic, but it's an objective. And, and he gave them two skills that are productive, speaking and writing. Well, in Le Tron Commun, English is here. Uh, no, French is here, English is here. That's just normal. In the first year baccalaureate, statistically, there is no significance between the two. In the second year baccalaureate, English is here, French is here. Look at how, how, how these students developed over three years. In, in, in two skills that are productive and, and that are, so uh, here he, he provided a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, 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 ways of interpretation for his, uh, for his uh, findings. Uh, and uh, I discussed because he was his main, uh, his, his, uh, his external examiner in, in, in his uh, dissertation. So uh, I added more. But, but anyway, so uh, th th these are his findings, and, 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 and that's, that's a kind of facts uh, that, that, he, uh, 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 that he based his, his doctorate on. Informal, informal learning. There is an American scholar who came to Fez uh, uh, for, uh, I guess, two or three semesters, I can't remember. And he interviewed, he was, uh, he was uh, kind of uh, surprised by how Moroccans speak English at ease and they speak it well. And he wants to know, I mean, what, what the secret was? I mean, how, how come that, that, that Morocco, well, uh, here English is uh, a foreign language, it is the second foreign language after French, French is also, uh, well, uh, w when we're talking about uh, linguistically speaking, forget about, uh, about what people say. Uh, 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 French is also a foreign language. 
he uh, yes he interviewed some 120 students from all the regions of Morocco from the mountains in Fez from urban area rural area etc and he came to this uh, to uh, uh, to uh, the findings saying that uh, this, those students in Morocco did not learn a lot of English from schools, rather they learned English from social media. That, that's what they said, because he interviewed them. And he called that at that time. I remember I met him uh, uh, the first time in 2017 in, in Dakhla in a conference. He called it Invisible University. That Invisible uh, University later uh, was labeled informal language learning. That's in a book he, uh, he, uh, he edited. And later, I guess uh, one of his doctoral students, uh, Lee, uh, introduces what he calls IDLE. It's the inf in informal digital learning of English. And, and starting from 2017 or so, it has become a kind of trend in the, in, in the learning and, and the teaching of English. So that is informal learning of, of English. Uh, so th th this one should go to the next uh, slide. I mean, that last uh, sentence, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back to it. Who, who contributed to the teaching and the learning of English in Morocco? A lot of organizations and a lot of bodies. It, it didn't happen just by chance. I mean, if, if we see these outcomes, so it, it, it's because there were, uh, obviously, so we're not going to, uh, to, to belittle the, uh, the efforts made by the administration, by, by the government, ministry, etc., etc. Well, they are there, they teach English, etc., etc. So, but there are other actors and one of them is the Moroccan Association of Teachers of English. This association has been around for four decades only. And it is still active. Uh, this one has helped particularly with teacher training. Another one is Morsenet, which is another as association that deals with resources. It provides the resources in, in some places. MERN has contributed with the iEARN, uh, that's connecting people from around the world. Uh, Access is a, a US uh, funded program that, uh, that uh, uh, helped those in the underprivileged areas to learn English in language centers or in schools. Publishing houses, well, we see now and then uh, uh, conferences, seminars, etc., run by, by, by the uh, publishing houses through their, their representatives here in Morocco. Uh, I probably I, I, I forgot to mention the uh, uh, connecting classrooms run by the British Council, which is another, I mean another an, another way of connecting the Moroccan uh, students uh, with the uh, British students to exchange, it, which is another channel of learning. Private language centres, as you see, so there are, there is a proliferation of these centres. In, in many cities, and Casablanca is no exception, and then the online and the ESU, so the English Speaking Union. Uh, th th that's an, or an organization that, th th that promotes English, and one of its activities is public speaking at the university level. So uh, th th the list is not exact exhaustive, but, but it's just this is what I recall uh, as uh, so. Uh, th that's those uh, organizations that back up a bit the, uh, uh, the, the learning and the teaching of English in Morocco. Now, English in secondary school education. I will just devote some time 
for this, just to know what is happening in secondary school. Uh, uh, I'm not going to talk, because if, if, if I talk about the number of hours, about when English starts in Morocco, and etc., it, it's just something redundant, because you know it very well. You know, you, you all went through the uh, education system in Morocco, and you know how many hours, you know how the, the kind of textbooks, the kind of uh, teachers you had, but I'm going to talk about a phenomenon that started in 2015, I guess. And it is the launch of uh, uh, five or six classes, I can't remember. So in, uh, in, in, in an article I found uh, five, but uh, to me it was six. I can't remember. Nick, do you remember how many classes? Six. That's, that's what I had in mind. So I always had six until I read an article very recently w w which says five, but, but, but it's, it's, uh, it's six. In these classes, uh, English is used as a, a medium of instruction. They study, they study uh, science, they study maths, they study everything. Uh, in English. Well, th there is an arrangement. It doesn't start in Le uh, Tron Coma, in the Common Core, but, 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 but there is an arrangement. I'm, I'm not going to, to dwell on details, you know. It, it, but uh, in a study by Ben Hamou and, uh, and uh, Qasbi in 2023, th they report that teachers are motivated to shift to English as a medium of instruction despite their limited English proficiency. So they are motivated. They say, we are ready, we are motivated, etc." EMI, that's English as a medium of instruction, contributes to both teachers and students' English proficiency. That is, uh, those teachers who took the initiative uh, uh, find it uh, profitable for them to improve their, their proficiency in English. And, and the same thing for the students. Uh, the, uh, uh, the limited mastery of English does not affect substantially the content. So that's, although, I mean, the teachers do not speak uh, uh, English fluently because they, they didn't come from, uh, they didn't major in English. They majored in science, they majored in maths, but they just uh, sh shifted to, to, to teaching these subjects in, in, uh, in English. Uh, uh, ben Hammou, uh, uh, that's his uh, thesis, his, uh, his doctorate thesis. 2023 surveyed 76 teachers and 366 students uh, and has found uh, this. Both some teachers and students admit their level of English to be poor to medium. However, the learners become more positive in K-12, so that's when they get to the second, the second year baccalaureate, they are very positive uh, because they receive more exposure to English. As, as I told you, so the, the, the system does not function from the tronc coma in English, but it's, it's uh, something like 25% of English, then 50% in the first year of baccalaureate, if, if, if it is still in the same, in the same format as, uh, as, as it used to. Both teachers and students prefer to teach or learn their subjects in English. Uh, and I'm quoting him. So, uh, Yamai was the most popular choice of the participants compared to the Arabic medium instruction and uh, French as a medium of instruction. That's, uh, teachers and students code switch when their levels of language proficiency fail. Code switch simply means they, they, they provide explanation or they provide their answers in Arabic in, instead, of, instead of English, when, when they cannot express themselves in English. AMI positively affects the learners and teachers' language proficiency, so it's already, it has already been seen. But at a certain point, the researcher says, it seems that the conditions available now in Moroccan education are not in favor of English as a medium of instruction. Uh, I, I, was, I was trying to, 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 to understand this interpretation. 
I, I will still investigate because I, I, I didn't read the dissertation from cover to cover. I, I read just parts that are specifically about English, but I should, and, 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 and here, uh, and here uh, he found even worse, worse findings about French as a medium of instruction. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this is good compared to, uh, to, uh, to, to French as a medium of instruction. Uh, EMI in secondary school teachers call for preset and in sets, so that is pre-service training and in-service training for EMI improvements. So this is another researcher who came up with this in 2022. Uh, uh, here, all, all these research studies are based on surveys. And we know that uh, those that are based on surveys, we use them as a kind of exploratory research. But when we want to know more about certain topic, we resort to other methodologies of research. And one that I am, uh, that, that I am advocating is evaluation based on learner achievements, on learners' achievements. So that's uh, what did they get? What's the percentage of graduation? What's the percentage of, uh, of, of repeaters, etc.? So that you can know through indicators whether what we are doing is effective or, or is not effective. English in higher education in Morocco has also been investigated by many researchers, but they've selected some five, four of them, five, four, yes. Uh, uh, reported that the university professors uh, ha all welcome or they are positive about the idea of, shift of shifting from FMI, that is French as a medium of instruction, to English as a medium of instruction in higher education. Uh, uh, again, so uh, uh, Benhamu and Qasbi asked some uh, doctoral students, and uh, Anne is 17, and they all welcome this shift, but they admit that they need the need for more English input. They say we need more English input, although it's a good move politically, but but, but kind of but we need uh, uh, a move. Uh, doctoral students prefer English because they want to have access to and use index journals, and they aspire to better jobs. So this is what is reported in uh, in in Bil uh, uh, and. Uh, and uh, Abdel Latif's uh, uh, research study in 2016. Then uh, 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 another another study. Before I move on to some uh, statistics, to, to some figures, and some to, to report to you what's happening in research, is uh, uh, the research study done by Nadiri and uh, Hausha. Uh, well, uh, it says that the instructors hold positive attitudes towards English as a medium of instruction, and the instructors show their need for pedagogical and linguistic support. So they need more English, and they need to work on their approach to teaching. Now, uh, uh, here, this is a... Uh, uh, an outcome of uh, a study of uh, 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 doctorate dissertations, theses, as we call them, in humanities and social, and social sciences from 1956 to 2007. And I've just put uh, focus, I've, I've, I've selected only languages. So, uh, as you see, for 49%, almost 50% of theses were written in, in Arabic, followed by French, almost 45%, and followed by English, which is just 3.75%. Now, Spanish, Italian, and German uh, come, come next. These 363 are distributed in these areas of research. Most of them are in literature or linguistics. That's normal. That's, that's where our professors came from. And that's where I came from. No, I didn't come from there. 
there because I'm counted here in education. So uh, that's me and six others. All right. <laughs> okay. So if you see again, so here, uh, the number of theses that's, that appear during, uh, it's almost 50 years. Now, here, most of them are in literature and linguistics, which means that English here, the thesis of English, prepared university professors. That's all. It, 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 we didn't dig into areas that can contribute to the growth, to the economic growth of Morocco. And I'm coming to that. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to this. Uh, Medical pub publications of a decade. This is from an article published in 2023. If you have a look at the, uh, at the thesis in four, four faculties of medicine and pharmacy in Morocco over a decade, from 20, 2011 to 2021, you will find that only 20, only 66 out of 9,729 theses were published in English, representing 0.7%. However, when it comes to articles, okay, look at this, to articles, publications, it's 50-50%. Okay, and I'm going to dwell on that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give more details. Uh, in in a, uh, a report by the uh, Higher Council of Education and Training and Scientific Research, published in 2022, so these are a bit the uh, uh, the publications in humanities and social sciences. I'm sure that in science it's more, in sciences and medical sciences, etc. But, but at least here, so you can see that English represents 48%, even more than French. If you have a look at the decades, here it is decades of uh, 80s to 90s, here it is uh, 90s to 2000, and here it is from 2008 to 2017. Look at the proportion of English in terms of publication. So publication, we have a lot of publication in English. Uh, here I want just, uh, I, I want to go more, to, 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 to dig more. I was just uh, 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 looking at some articles that are interested in bibliometrics of publications in English. And if you see this uh, uh, in social sciences again, in Scopus and JSTOR, from 1966 to 2012, 90% of the publications happened to be in English. The same thing for all the others. But look particularly at, at the publications during COVID, COVID-19. From uh, out of the 2,091 articles, no, 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 it's not this, it's this. The scientific production on, on COVID-19 from December 2019 20, uh, uh, to June 2020, which is roughly 19,000, 20,000 reports, articles, etc., etc. 94% were published in English. What does this mean for a medical doctor? Because people were trying to understand COVID-19. It simply means that if you don't read in English, you are out of the game at 94%. Okay, so that's, that's uh, yesterday I was, I was driving and listening to the radio, that's, the, the, by the time, that, the, that's the time when I listen to the radio, because I don't have one at all. I have it in my car and then I like, uh, I like those debates while driving. 
And you know how much we drive here in Casablanca. They're for a long time, so you can... Uh, yesterday they were talking on a radio station about the uh, uh, reform in higher education, and there was uh, one of our colleagues who said, uh, well, language doesn't matter. If you don't speak English, it doesn't matter. Now, my answer from this platform is it does because of this. That, that's why it does. Because if you, if, if you see, for example, I, I've chosen uh, agronomy, I've chosen food industry, it's just because we are an agricultural country. And because, uh, 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 look for example at this, at this area, research in green and sustainable technology, 100% in English. Well, it's just something like 55 articles, if I can remember that. But, but they are all in, all, all in English. Now, uh, uh, finished with the figures, et cetera, et cetera. But, but let's see a bit the outcomes. Uh, I've, I've talked about all these, and I've talked about uh, 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 secondary uh, schools. I've talked about uh, the success of uh, learning English uh, formally and informally in Morocco. But the outcomes are, are not uh, good enough. Uh, 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 by the way, I, I didn't find uh, other resources where I can collect information. I found this resource, it's uh, Education First, which used to be English First. I mean, uh, and uh, they say, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not, I'm, I'm not convinced, they say that they collect data from from uh, other databases of, of, of uh, exams, of tests, just like IELTS or TOEFL or TOEIC or any, uh, any other, uh, other, other uh, uh, tests. Uh, and they, they, they compare countries. Well, I've, I've brought the, uh, uh, the, the Moroccan uh, uh, rank which is, uh, so those in red are very low. They are considered to be very low, and those in 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 black are low. But for somebody who who uh, who uh, who tries to scrutinize figures, I can confirm that Morocco is improving here. Because look at the number of participating countries; it is increasing. But Morocco hasn't lost uh, at least its uh, its. Uh, it's, uh, it's rank, because here it was only 88, 100, and now we are in 113 in 2023, I guess. Yes, 2023, 113. So Morocco is, is improving. Now, <clears throat> what are the benefits of English for the country? W why uh, why should, should we uh, talk about English in Morocco? It's just because one of the things is the FDIs, that's the Foreign Direct Investments. In a report that appeared in 2012 about, um, about uh, MENA region, all the countries all together, there was a kind of uh, part where, where they compared uh, the percentage of FDIs. And I, I just uh, noticed that the countries where English is spread receive more FDIs from English-speaking countries. And if I give you what is written about Morocco there, so we receive the, 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 the percentage we receive from France only is 25%. And from all the English-speaking countries, it's just 15.4%. So you see, so when talking about English-speaking countries, we are talking at least about the US, the UK, and uh, Australia, and uh, New Zealand. So, uh, I mean, these are, and Canada. These are strong, we are talking about strong economies, and they don't invest in Morocco. In another study, 
there was somebody who studied 30 years of, of scores of TOEFL in 100 countries, and he studied the correlation between those scores and bilateral trade. There is a positive correlation between the two. So the higher the level of, of, of English is, uh, the more they the more those people create bilateral trade uh, across across the board, particularly with those 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 countries uh, who's uh, 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 with strong economy and that that use uh, that use English in their countries. In, in tourism, for example, Morocco is is uh, is one. I mean, one of the main sources of our uh, our uh, our uh, GDP is uh, is from tourism. Gradol in 2006, or 2007, 2006, yes. he, uh, he said that uh, almost, it's exactly 74% of interactions in English happen between non-native and non-native in, in tourism. So, so you see that, that in order to attract tourists, you must have people who speak English because, because all, almost the interactions happen to be in English. So uh, another, another benefit for Morocco is that Moroccan researchers need up-to-date findings to open new research paths for innovation, particularly in technology, agronomy, and all those areas that, that, that make, uh, uh, that, uh, that, that can, uh, contribute to the economic growth of Morocco. Individuals. What's the benefit for two individuals, not to the country? Now, in 2011, uh, a study uh, says that the gap between similar skilled people, between those who speak English and those who don't, the average is 12%. And you know, when we are talking about average, let me tell you about statistics. If you have one leg on fire and another leg on ice, statistically speaking, you are comfortable. Because when you calculate the average, it's just uh, it's, it's, it's the normal temperature. Now, why am I telling you this? So 12%, you can find 50%, you can find 1%, you can find minus, you can find any, uh, but the average is, is, is 12%. However, uh, uh, look at this. Uh, in, in, uh, the, uh, again, the same report studied the job, job offers, job announcements in different newspapers and websites, etc. And Nearly all of them require English, with a variety of, with a degree of, of, of difference. Uh, worldwide, 25% uh, salary gap is recorded in Asia, 35% in India, but the same report says that the salary gap between similar skilled individuals that speak English and those that do not, that do not varies between 5 and 95%. <laughs> mobility is, is another reason to individuals. If you, mobility, I'm talking about international tourism, international students' mobility, and migrants' mobility in the labor market, those who would like to work abroad. All these are for individuals. Now, what are the jobs that demand English in Morocco? Uh, again, I'm, 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 I'm alluding to that report that appeared in 2012. If you have a look at those jobs, uh, well, uh, uh, I mean, I, uh, most of these jobs in Morocco, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the, these disciplines, IT and software development, for example, most of it is taught in, Fr in French. So, which means that we are not meeting the, the aspirations. 
who are away from the aspirations. The same thing for tourism, for example. So we have uh, uh, schools in vocational training, but, uh, but they teach in French or, or, or in Arabic. Uh, etc. So all these aeronautic equipment, etc., etc. Uh, <clears throat> but there are some drawbacks. There are some. There, there is a negative side of, of English in Morocco. W one of it is is that it creates inequity and limited equal opportunities. In a study we we, we conducted. Uh, I mean, uh, that's uh, three of us, Bouzdian et al. And it's, uh, well, uh, it's it finished, but we just have to submit it to, to a journal to be published. We, we compared private and public higher education institutions. And those in the private sector do not think that English is the key to their employment. But in the uh, public sector, th those in the private do not think that it's the key. They think that their, 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 uh, their major is the key. But uh, English is, is, is an addition. However, in, in, uh, in, in the public sector, they think that English is the key to their employment. Because w w w what can uh, a BA holder from a Department of English Studies in Morocco do? Teach. So, which means that it's a kind of equation. And here it's inequity. That's not equitable. Now, another inequity is between the private sector and the public sector in primary school, preschool, and high school these days. How can you compare a small kid from preschool who received four to six hours of English a week with somebody who graduates from a public school who started, his, who started English at the best these days at K7. I mean, it, 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 there is inequity here, so that's, that's we're not, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not criticizing the private sector, but, but, but I'm just bringing facts. It, it is, it is a factor of inequity. Uh, again, based on a lot of studies, surveys, etc., what we noticed, we noticed that the richer the people are, the more educated the parents are, these people learn more foreign languages but they neglect Arabic, okay? Uh, th 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 this, is, this is documented in, uh, in, in, in a series of, of studies, uh, and, and, and I'm coming to that in, in writing again, so that's just, uh, I wish that uh, the day has more than 24 hours, but, but, but it's what it is, we cannot say, we cannot do it otherwise. Uh, 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 the report by the British Council has summarized this, what they say. Younger, wealthier, and more educated youth have the strongest command of English. So uh, here it is inequity. It's based on social, social class, based on family income, based on, uh, on, 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 on where you study, on location. And, and, and this is not good for, for an education system. An education system uh, that operates effectively is an education system that gives the same opportunities for all the kids, for all the graduates, no matter where they are. Uh, English helps with linguistic divide. I, in a study by a colleague of ours in Bini Millal in 2016, he studied a bit the profile of the people who got into Al Akhawain University. And almost 70% of them studied English for more than six years, which simply means they studied in, in, uh, in, private, in, in private schools or they had, private, they, they, they had classes in a private, uh, in a private uh, uh, language center. 
Uh, misconceptions, I'm coming to the end of uh, this talk. Misconceptions is that a, a lot of people call for a shift from French to English. I don't see why. Is, 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 there, is there something wrong with having Amazir, Darija, classical Arabic, uh, uh, French, and English in Morocco? What's wrong with this? I mean, there is enough room for all these languages in a Moroccan heart. So why shift? Keep French. But add English, that's all. I mean, I, 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 this is a misconception. Another misconception is that some people think that if we adopt English, we will just progress just like Rwanda. So uh, I've heard this uh, on, on, on various occasions. <laughs> let, let, let me tell you, Rwanda did not work on its education system first. It worked on attitudes. Just go and then do some research. Why Rwanda is, is, is a kind of, it's not because of English, full stop. It's because of other things. Uh, some people say, again, if we shift to English, uh, or a shift to English will improve the quality of the Moroccan education system. Completely wrong. Completely wrong. I know what I'm talking about. I, I come from education. And they know that the language of instruction has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of education system. It's the change of the approach. It's the change of other things. It's not the language. Look at what, look at what happened. In 2014, Morocco decided to go back to uh, uh, Biof. That's Baccalaurea International Option Francaise. Yeah, th that is, in, in simple words, teaching the disciplines of science in French. Because many colleagues, including my colleagues at the university level, and they said it in, in, on different occasions, I said, no, please do not relate the quality of education with the language of instruction. There are other parameters that, that have nothing to do with, 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 uh, with, uh, with the language. Dig somewhere else, okay? And uh, uh, we have a shift to French. Now there are studies, surveys, where teachers are calling for going back to Arabic because they say that the students do not understand anything in French and they are teaching in Darija anyway. This is, this is what I know from, from, from research. Uh, uh, and the shift to English will, some people think that the shift to English will contribute to the development of the country. In 2010, 2011, there was a book on languages and developments, and uh, Nick knows that very well because it's published by the British Council, where they say it bluntly. Clearly. So uh, English, they say there is now a greater understanding that English is not the only. It can contribute somehow. But it's not the only language that plays a role in the development process. You can, you can, you can develop using your language, not, not using English. So these are some misconceptions that you would like to, 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 to clarify here before before I, put, before I move on to some recommendations. Recommendations, and they will start with the policy. Uh, there is someone who, uh, I, I, like, I, I like the article by Shahu, 2016, who says that uh, colonialism has left a kind of heritage which triggers the conflict of languages. And that's what we are living in Morocco. We have a kind of uh, uh, Amazir is marginalized. Uh, there is conspiracy theory against Arabic. Uh, uh, French is the language of the colonizer, etc., etc. So, and English, uh, according to Philipson, that's the uh, linguistic imperialism, etc. So, uh, all, all, all these, all these things. Now, instead of uh, trying to divide. So why not have a policy that, that believes in complementarity? We have Amazir, good. 
their values, etc., to pass through Amazigh. We have standard Arabic. That's good. We have a legacy, a lot of heritage, cultural heritage in that language. But other languages will help with more opening of Morocco to other cultures and other cultural heritages. So th th that's the way it should go. It's not a kind of conflict, but complementarity. In terms of research, we still lack regular national assessments to watch the progress of languages. We have PNEA in, uh, in, in French. I don't know wh whether you know this. It's, it's the uh, Higher Council of Education and Training and Scientific Research that comes every 10 years. They, they run a kind of test across uh, the country to know the level of students. But this in, in, in maths, French, and Arabic. English is not included. And we need some state-of-the-art articles. So uh, we need some researchers to come up with an article telling us research has achieved this point. So if you are a researcher, start from here. This is what we know. And this is what is not investigated yet. So we need some people to do this job and to come up with these articles. In terms of approach, uh, I cannot say it better than uh, Buckner, 2008. We must shift our focus from knowledge to skills. Shifting the focus from what students know to what students know how to do with their English. That is uh, giving uh, uh, messages through English. It's not just teaching grammar and teaching vocabulary and that's it and you stop there, but it's educating. It's, it's, it's change and, 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 they say, um, and I tell that, uh, I report that in the status of teachers where a teacher should shift from uh, 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 a language, so a teacher of a language to an educator. And from teaching English as a system to teaching it as a tool of learning. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested anymore in, 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 in the students to know the rules of uh, the difference between simple past and present perfect, but I'm, but I'm interested in what, what the students can do with the simple past and the present perfect, and give them the opportunities to express themselves in these two tenses. Textbooks. Uh, you know that we are still running with the textbooks dating back to 2007, 2003. And it's high time they had to change. Well, because of the change that has happened in the world, that, that's number one. Number two is, is because we need now some textbooks with digital uh, versions and websites to accompany the textbooks. Th that's how the tradition is all over the world. And if we want to align with, with, with developed countries, we should, we should opt for this. And then, uh, textbooks in higher education. When I was here with uh, my, uh, my American colleague, I mentioned that, uh, that we don't have textbooks in higher education. His wife was here. And then when I was driving them home, she said, hang on, uh, Professor Bouzian, what, what do you mean you have no textbooks in higher education? She said, yes, I mean it. We don't have textbooks. How, how, how do the students study? I said they, 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 they study, but without a textbook. I, I mean, I mean it's, it's a kind of, now, textbooks these days come with textbooks, uh, a score to insert in, in an online platform with teacher's notes of every chapter, with the teacher's PowerPoints of every chapter, in a textbook, so it, it, it's a kind of package that comes along, uh, along uh, in higher education. I, I don't know why, why, why we don't have textbooks here. And ESP, English for Specific Purposes, uh, uh, needs more structuring, I have already said. I've already talked about this. Conclusion. Oof. All right, sorry, it was long, all right. <laughs> Uh, I would conclude with some assets and some challenges. Assets. Morocco is a multilingual country, and most people hold positive attitudes towards English and towards other languages by extension. So uh, th th this, is, th this is a good asset. 
I mean, we are not going to convince the, uh, the government, oh, we need to teach English. They already tell us, go ahead, please teach English, all right? There is enthusiasm at the, office, at the official level. All our ministers show enthusiasm, but that's just enthusiasm. I'm, I, I didn't say they implement anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the diversity of learning sources. We, we don't have just one source. We have formal, informal, which is a good asset. Uh, there are good initiatives of, of implementing uh, English as a medium of instruction in higher education, which is a good asset. Many researchers already publish in English. That's good as well. And English is back in many institutions and public spaces as well. So all these are assets. But we still have challenges. So among the challenges, there is a long way to go to reach the aspirations set by different reforms, equity, mastery of, if, of, of foreign languages, and economic growth. And, and they have talked about all these uh, along, along my talk. Despite some success, English remains below the aspirations. Implement it even earlier, because if, if, for those of you who read carefully uh, the charter, going back to 1999, it said that it should start in primary school. Yes, yes. Particularly fifth grade. Yes. yes. That's, that's, what the, that's what the charter says. But uh, again, this aspiration is, 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 is far from, from being reached. OK, uh, learning English happens outside the formal institutions, which can be a good, which can be an asset, and it can be a, a bad thing. Because if people learn outside informally, well, I should use those informal channels in my classroom as a teacher of English to help my students make best of those, of those, of those, uh, of those uh, uh, informal uh, channels. The subjects that will help with the development of the country are not yet provided in English. I've, I've shown that. I've shown that uh, aeronautics, uh, technology, etc. So these are provided in French. Now, CLIL becomes a good alternative. Uh, uh, CLIL is where you teach content and language at the same time, which, with, uh, with diversity of, of a degree of implementation. Sometimes it's more content than language. Other times it's more language uh, than content, etc. So th th there, are, there are, of course, there are, there are types of CLIL. More efforts are needed in policy, materials design, teacher training, and pedagogy, including assessment. So aspirations remain partially achieved. Thank you very much indeed. For those of you who need uh, uh, references, please just uh, uh, write an email to me, and then I can I can provide you with the, with, with the reference. Because I mean, I found that it's a long list, and uh, that's not it's not feasible to uh, to, to to provide it uh, here. So, but, uh, but but you can provide that. So.